Welcome everyone. Uh, this is our fifth uh, Genetti Racing 125 flex fuel upgrade we're doing on a ZL1. Um, a little bit warmer than it has been in the previous, but uh, this vehicle is uh, doing well, but not as well as the previous versions that we've done. And I'm going to show you why. Um, I expect this vehicle just came out of storage so the fuel in it was pretty bad uh, I only made two pulls on pump gas and um, I had too much knock retard so and it was over half a tank of fuel so we went ahead and filled it with uh, E85 which brought the, um, the ethanol content only up to about 44 uh, percent this particular graph you're looking at right now you may have to just come down here yeah a bit. Okay. okay, there we go. Yeah. We got a little bit of a glare. Um, with the pump gas, we were getting up to six degrees of knock retard. So I'm not comfortable with that. And again, we haven't done any timing changes in this, uh, in this combination. No timing, no boost changes. We didn't get a baseline on the car before we took it apart. We went right ahead and put our kit on it. Uh, knowing pretty much what to expect from all the previous ones that we've done um, and I'll pull up the other log which is the last one I just made and you can see there's not the slightest bit of uh, knock retard in the t in the timing areas here so nice clean pull on E44 now I expect that it will make a little bit more power as the ethanol content goes up to about E60 and we really don't want to run more than about E50 on these anyway um, so we got crappy fuel with E85 on top of it and uh, we made 645 rear wheel horsepower and 642 pounds of torque and I pulled up uh, a graph from one of the other cars we recently did and right away we can see that there's a discrepancy, the green line being your manifold pressure or boost pressure, okay? The lower boost line is this red car that we're looking at, and this upper one is uh, the gray car, okay? So we're down a full pound of boost, which explains the differences in the torque. So 642 versus 663 about 25 pounds of torque is is average of what you'll see with one pound of boost so we're up against a mechanical deficiency I went ahead and checked the uh, bypass valve adjustment on the blower which everyone talks about as being you know the next best thing to slice bread uh, I went ahead and backed that screw off all the way allowing the bypass valve to close fully and I saw zero difference in the manifold pressure so this blower based on its um, tolerances if you will is just not putting out the boost that all of the other cars that we've had in here so far have put out it's down about one pound everywhere we can easily make that up with a pulley change um, and get that back likely this was one of those cars it was a little bit low because the manifold pressure is low it has the exact almost the exact same um, combination the customer supplied us with the rotofab which was already on the car when it came in um, and he supplied us with a course of x-pipe and course of mufflers we've been running the um, cooks long tube headers which are on this coated green cats with the Cooks X-Pipe in the factory muffler. Maybe there's a little bit of a difference there. I don't know. We can't prove that one way or the other unless we were able to do some sort of back-to-back -back testing. But overall, I got what I should have. I have the right power curve, the right torque curve. Uh, timing values are spot on. There's no knock retard. So everything is as it should be. And I'm up against something that I have no control over. This blower doesn't put out as much boost as all the other previous ones that we've done. And it's just, it's what they call stacking tolerances in manufacturing, you know. 
Uh, sometimes the tolerances fall in your favor, sometimes they don't. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, it's still going to be a huge increase over what the car came in here like. No question about it. Um, I just wouldn't want anybody to be disappointed without some sort of an explanation. You know, so all of the cars that we're doing have been falling between 660 and 670 rear wheel horsepower and, you know, 660 and 670 torque. This one's down, but the curves overlay, you know, they yeah. look, they're the same shape. Yeah, they are. So all we need to do is spin the blower a little faster and we can easily surpass these numbers to make up for the boost deficiency. So, manifold pressure is horsepower. So, I hope that uh, this all makes sense. If it doesn't, please post your comments down below. And we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, please like and subscribe to our YouTube page. We appreciate the support and the following. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please post them down below and we'll answer them for you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it repeat. amazing amount of power at the rear wheels from a car that only rated at 650 at the crank right and 650 torque so it's up quite a bit yeah it's, it's again, impressive any way you look at it yeah, it's, we just, you know, it's, it's a shame we didn't get baseline numbers on this but the combination of the crappy fuel that's in the tank whether it's old fuel or it's just crap fuel you know you might have got a load of 87 in there who knows but we've got we've only got E44 on top of crappy fuel, and we got low boost. So with those two factors, it's still making amazing power. Yeah, I agree. You know, if you take that into consideration, I mean, look at that torque curve. It just doesn't get any better than that. The car's going to be an absolute animal. No doubt. You know, we could find that other 20 horsepower really easy with a little pulley change. So. No question. All right, guys, I think that does it for the for this one.